Leviticus 17, 14 informs us that the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Once again, scientists are finding out that the truths of Scripture are far more literal than they ever imagined. One evening, Mary Nell Wyatt asked me to take a look at some material from a burial cave to see if these tiny particles were present. Without my knowledge, one of the samples was actually the blood sample that Ron had taken from the Ark of the Covenant dig. Okay, Mary Nell's going to take the sample and uh, mix it with sterile water. Test tube there that we. The sample was placed under the microscope, and as the specimen began to come into focus, thousands of tiny particles, summatids if you will, became plainly visible. At that time, Mary Nell, who was standing behind me, began to weep. As I turned around and saw the expression on her face, I realized immediately that the sample we were looking at was actually the sample that Ron had found to be the blood of Christ. Dried blood is dead blood. Everybody knows that, all right? They can test the blood of the pharaohs, the mummies of the pharaohs, all right? There are certain things they can do that cannot get a chromosome count by any method I'm familiar with, all right? Things keep changing. I don't profess to know everything. However, there's no way I know that you can get a chromosome count out of dead blood. You can get a DNA and some other things, but not a chromosome count, all right? That's done by living white blood cells. Now then, first of all, in this analysis, I took the blood into a laboratory in Israel. And I asked one of the people I work with in, in antiquities, where is a good laboratory that does reliable work? And they said, such and such, such and such. I took it. I just said, please examine this blood and tell me what you can tell me about it. All right? They said, well, look, we're going to reconstitute it. We're going to put it in normal saline and keep it at body temperature for 72 hours with uh, gentle swirling. All right? That's their business. That's great. I said, now, I want to be there when you check it out. They said, fine. So I was back. They checked it out. I said, now, uh, they said it's human blood. We can tell that. They did whatever tests they need to do. And then I said, take some of the white blood cells and put them in a growth medium body temperature for 48 hours and they said well that'll do no good because it's dead blood I said would you please do that for me and they said okay we'll do it so anyway I said I want to be there when you take it out and examine it so I was back there they took it out examined it under a microscope and the one technician called the other one over there and then they called the boss over there and they were talking Hebrew a mile a minute there for a little bit and they looked at me and they said Mr. Wyatt this human blood only has 24 chromosomes in it everybody else has 46 you see 23 from your mother 23 from your father 22 autosomes from your mother 22 autosomes from your father you get an X from your mother you may get an X or a Y from your father all right this blood had 23 chromosomes from the mother's side, one Y chromosome only. You see, the ch a child could not have developed if they hadn't had the autosomes from the mother. So all of his physical characteristics were determined by his mother's side of the family, her autosomes. His maleness was determined by this one Y that came from the source, not a human male. Then they said, this blood is alive. And then they said, whose blood is this? I said, it's the blood of your Messiah.
assure you those men's lives have changed. Later, Ron Wyatt would confirm that this was the Ark of the Covenant, and that the blood on the mercy seat was from someone who had only one human parent. There were no paternal chromosomes except for one Y chromosome. Jesus was God's only begotten Son, just as he said he was. The Bible prophesied that Christ's blood would be sprinkled on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, but as it was to be kept secret until our time, it was partially, but not totally, hidden in symbols. Matthew recorded an earthquake at the cross, which formed a crack in the ground below it. John tells us that when the Roman soldier pierced the side of Christ, blood and water ran out. The blood and water apparently ran down the earthquake crack. The prophet Isaiah wrote that Jesus, when he was bruised and broken, would sprinkle many nations. John reveals to us a secret. He tells us that the blood and water is here on earth as a testimony. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. Right before the Babylonians besieged Jerusalem and destroyed the temple, the Ark was hidden. The very Ark of the Covenant, with the testimony of God, or the law, that the people had broken and that we need atoning for. God knew where Jesus was to suffer and die for humanity, and 600 years before the crucifixion, he hid the Ark right under the Golgotha Escarpment. 